الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد الحمد لله Today is the 19th of Jumad al 1442 It is a Sunday And we are looking at sending forth to you our third and final installment of the introduction to the text in which we're reading the um, recommendations and, uh, and commendations on the text by the great Muradir uh, before we begin this text on these Muradir and Sheikhs we've now come to the following Taqarid al-Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Basit ala sheikh al-Hanbaliya Ruhaybani now, this commendation is from the great Sheikh Marja, the Alim and Khatib and preacher of Ruhiba, which is in Sham, known as a great scholar of integrity. And we will talk about him. There's a footnote here about him in which it says, Huwa Sheikhuna, Mujiruna, Wuho Imam, Wuho Khatib, and Mudarrasun Lil Madhab Il Hanbali, Fi Medina to Ruhib, Ruhibi Il Hanbaliya. بالشام وهو مجاز من والده ووالده كان مفتيا للمحنابلة هناك So it says that he is our sheikh, our leader, he is an imam and preacher and lesson giver of the Hanbali Madhab in the city of Ruhiba in Sham. He is the successor and carry on carry, the carrier of his father's legacy, and his father was a mufti there for the Hanabila at in his lifetime. So this tells you something about his father. So we'll start with the statement of the commendation of a Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Basir ala Sheikh Al Hanbali Ruhibani, where he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وسيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of all creation, and peace and blessings be upon the Master of the Messengers, our Master Muhammad, upon his followers, family, companions, all together. And as for what comes next, فقد طلب مني فضيلة الدكتور مصطفى عليان أن أطلع على كتابه إضاءات على منهج الإمام أحمد بن حنبلي أحمد بن حنبلة في في العقيدة والدعوة في العقيدة والدعوة. Our brother, the noble doctor مصطفى عليان, I had the opportunity to look at his text, clarifications on the methodology of Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal in creed and propagation. And he sought from me a commendation. So I answered him in that regard. And so I answered him in that regard, and after I took a look and examined the text, I thanked him for these clarifications. He sought for me a commendation for the book, thinking of me that I'm qualified to give commendations. And I ask Allah that he make me just as he thinks of me, and even makes me better than how he thinks of me. وَقَدْ قَرَّضَ الْكِتَابِ كُلٌّ مِّنَ السَّادَةِ الْعُلَمَاءِ الشَّيْخ مُحَمَّدْ عِصَامْ حَسْنَ شَطِّ وَالشَّيْخ إِسْمَعِيلُ مُحَمَّدْ بَدْرَانْ وَالشَّيْخ عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَانْ أَحْمَدَ الشَّامِ فَجَزَاهُ اللَّهُ الْمُؤَلَّفِ خَيْرُ جَزَاءَ عَلَى مَا بَذَلَ مِنْ مِنْ جُهْلٍ تَوْضِيحِ مَا خَفِيَ عَنْ عَنْ مَذْهَبِ الْإِمَامِ أَحْمَدٍ وَالَّذِي كَانَ النَّاسُ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّ الْمَذْهَبَ فِيهِ مِنَ الشِّدَّةِ مَا جَعَلَ النَّاسُ يَضْرِبُونَ الْمَثَلَ لِكُلِّ مُتَشَدِّدٍ مُتَعَنْتٍ بِقَوْلٍ لَا تَجْعَلْهَا حَنْبَلِيَّةً وَهَذَا مِنَ الْأَمْثَلَةِ الْمُفْتَرَةِ عَلَى الْمَذْهَبِ So this text was already given commendations by all of the elder scholars, such as the Sheikh Muhammad Isam Hassan Ashati, the Sheikh Ismail Muhammad Badran, the Sheikh Abdurrahman Ashami, 
May Allah reward the author with the best reward according to the effort he expended in clarifying what is often concealed of the method of the, of the Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal. And that which the people think in that the madhab is known for stringency, stridency, and harshness. So much so that it's become a custom on some people's tongues whenever they're mentioning some matter or someone being overly harsh or obsessed with detail. Oh, don't make it hanbali like And these are from the clear lies that are attributed to the madhab. ولكن ضرب المثل بسبب تمسك الإمام أحمد بعدم خلق القرآن يوم الفتنة. But in fact, this example was used by the people of innovation on account of the Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal's not taking hold of the position of the Quran being created in the age of tribulation during the Inquisition. ولم يثنه السجن and this and he could not be moved from his position by prison والتعذيب عن سلامة معتقديه nor by punishment from the true creed وإلا فقد وضح الدكتور مصطفى سلاسة المذهب واعتداله بكثير بكثير من المسائل التي لم توجد بغيره مما جعل القانون المصري والسوري يعتمدان على كثير من المسائل الفقهية على المذهب الحنبلي and furthermore, it was clarified by the Dr. Mustafa the unique qualities of the madhab and its balance and many principles which are not present in other madhabs. So much so that the legal codes that were set up for the Egyptians and the Syrians in the early stages depended upon many of their fiqh principles on the Hanbali madhab. وأختم كلامي بما ختم به جدي منظومته في الفقه الحنبلي وهو الشيخ السيد محمد حسن الشيخ الصيادي الرفاعي الحنبلي الشهير بالذنوب وهي منظومة قمت بتحقيقها ونشرها مع بعض الإخوة الحنابلة بإشراف ال... بإشراف الوالد رحمه الله حيث قال And so I'd like to end my statement here according to how my grandfather ended his text in Hanbali Fiqh, and my grandfather is none other than the Sheikh, the noble master, Muhammad Hassan, the Sheikh Al Siyadi, Al Rifai, Al Hanbali, known primarily as, as known primarily as as Zanub or Zanub. The text he wrote is a rhyming text that I have critically analyzed and put together, and printed it with some of our Hanbali brothers for the honor of the father of this text may Allah have mercy upon him when he said فَالْحَمْدُلِلَّهِ عَلَى الْعِنْعَامِ وَالشُّكْرُ لِلَّهِ عَلَى الْإِلْهَامِ Praise be to Allah for the abundant favors and gratefulness be to Allah for all of the blessed endeavors and what comes from that ثُمَّ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ سَرْمَدَى and may peace and blessings be forevermore Upon the Prophet, the Chosen One, the Caller to Guidance forevermore. And his family, followers, companions, the righteous ones, the guardians of taqwa, with all the joy and blessings of those known, the secret ones and blessed ones. قَدْ تَمَّتِ الْأَرْجُوزَةُ الْمُفِيدَةِ Already, this blessed rhyming text has been completed. مَعَ نَظْمِهَا بِجَمْلٍ سَدِيدَةِ With the clear patterns and detailed affairs that have been repeated for you. فِي مَذْهَبِ الْإِمَامِ وَالْمُبَجَّلِ In the madhab of the Imam, the brilliant one, هُوَ الْإِمَامُ أَحْمِدُ بْنُ حَنْبَلِ the Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, the stellar one. Al Lisani Nazim al Faqir, upon the tongue of the organizer of this text, the weak one, Muhammad al Ruhaybi, the Tahqiri, Muhammad al Ruhaybi, the weakened one in need of Allah's protection. Yitasamahul Qira'a min al Khalali, and we hope that those who recite this, Al Qurra, 
that when they recite this, that they will make dua for the author and have the blessings of it, and that the author will also make dua for them for their blessings. Walhamdulillahi awwalan wa akhiran, and praise be to Allah in the beginning and the end. So that's the end of the statement by Sheikh al ruhibani I just wanted to mention a couple of things about his text. What he said about the Egyptian and Syrian law codes, this was before um, the legal scholars of the English and the British came in and brought in Roman and Napoleonic law codes and impressed them upon Egypt during the period after Muhammad Ali Basha was um, brought to heel in the time of his children, and the Albanians ruled over Egypt through the use of the uh, British and such. But before that time, the primary law code in all affairs in Egypt and in half half to 60% of Syria was the Hanbali law codes, simply because of their sophistication, as well as their details, as well as their attention to detail. So it's interesting that the point that he brings about people saying that the reason why people would accuse the Hanbali Madhab of being stern or fanatical or whatever, this was primarily a slight by people of innovation. So it's so strange that some people from Muslim orthodoxy have actually picked up this bid'ah term and this bid'ah uh, way of referring to things, and then they continue to use this bid'ah. It's just like the one for uh, democracy or freedom of speech, and they've then just translated it straight across in Arabic. It's the same filth. Now let's take a look at the final commendation. This is تقريد الشيخ القراء في دوم العالم المقري الشيخ موافق محمد عيون الحنبلي. The commendation of the Sheikh of the Quran reciters in Duma, the Alim, the Quran reciter, the Sheikh موافق Mahmoud Uyun Al Hanbali. So we'll look at his commendation in which he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate. In Alhamdulillah, Nahmedu when a Sainu who when a Stafiru, when I would be lahim or Shururi and Fusina was see at Yamanina, my Yahidi in Lahu Fala Mudilla, woman you little fella her dealer, wash had wash had a lay in the law, Wahdahu la Shadikala. وأشهد أن أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله وخيرته من خلقه أداء الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة. Indeed, praises to Allah. We praise Him. We seek His assistance. We seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and our evil actions. Whoever Allah has guided. There is none that can lead him astray. And whoever he is led astray, there is none that can guide him. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone. There is no partner for him. He is alone and one is uniqueness. And I bear witness that our master, Muhammad, is his slave and messenger. The best of his creation. He has discharged the trust, conveyed the message, and advised the ummah, and revealed all matters that had been hidden that needed to be expounded upon. وبعد, and what comes next? Mustafa المسلمين, the Sheikh, the noble Sheikh Mustafa, he sought for me. May Allah ennoble him and the Muslims with him. That I take a look at this text which he authored and put together due to his hard effort and his goodness and thankfulness and blessing in the, in the affair. عن مذهب الإمام أهل السنة والجماعة الإمام المبجل أحمد بن حنبل رحمه الله ونكتب له تقريضا عليه حيث أحسن الظن به. And this book was about the madhab of the Imam of Muslim Orthodoxy. The Imam, the noble Imam. Ahmed ibn Hanbal, may Allah have mercy upon him. And the Sheikh Mustafa, he asked that I write a commendation for him. And this was out of his good opinion of me that I deserve to write such a commendation. So I answered his request. 
hoping that this may be a means that I might get some reward and some blessing and that there might be for, for me some hidden treasure in which it will bring about the intercession on account of that on a day in which neither wealth nor children will protect one. None shall be saved on that day except whoever came to Allah with a pure heart. فأقول, so I say in the introductory remarks. وقد صح عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قوله يحمل هذا العلم من كل خلف عدوله ينفون عنه تحريف الغالين وانتحال المبطلين وتأويل الجاهلين This knowledge shall be carried in every age by every generation by the upright and trustworthy ones who shall negate from it the corruptions of those who exaggerate the mistakes and ill patterns of those who would nullify and go astray, and the interpretation of the ignorant ones. And this has been graded as authentic by Dhiya al-Din al-Maqdisi in his work Al-Ahadith al-Mukhtara, The Chosen Set Aside Hadith, Volume 8, page 610. المجلة الثامنة والصفحة عشر وستمية وإن الشيخ المصطفى حفظه الله ممن حمل هذا العلم الشريف وما ذاك إلا لغيرته على العقيدة والشرع وشرع الحنيف خصوصا المذهب الأحمد مذهب الإمام أحمد رحمة الله رحمه الله إمام أهل السنة والجماعة the Shaykh Mustafa, may Allah preserve him, is from among those who carry this noble knowledge. And he only does it out of his pride for the creed and the pure revealed law. And in specifics, his pride and love for the madhab of Imam Ahmad, the madhab of the Imam Ahmad, may Allah have mercy upon him, Imam Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'a, the Imam of Muslim Orthodoxy. وناهك بهذا الإمام الذي كان قرآنا حيا يمشي على الأرض. This was an imam in which, when he moved around in the earth, he was the Quran living, walking on earth. وينابي على العلم والفقه. And he was the carrier of the knowledge and the fiqh. تم بجس تم 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 بجس من تربته الربانية الخصبة المستقاة. And his knowledge was such that if there was dry dirt, his mannerism and his greatness was such that it would water that dry ground of dirt and ignorance. It would be watered and it would also be illuminated with the lamp of prophethood. And so we ask that Allah have mercy upon him. And house him in the highest palisades of the paradise. He had to an yati as zamana bimithlihi. Inna zamana bimithlihi nabakhil. As the poet had said, come forward, look for a day in which there would be someone in his time that would come like him. Indeed, there shall never be another time like his when he had come. Wida radna and nufia haka has al imamu. حق مذهبه احتجنا إلى مجلدات كثيرة لكن الشيخ مصطفى حفظه الله أشار بإشارات لطيفة ومهمة إلى هذا المذهب وإمامه رحم رحمه الله If we wanted to extol the true right that this imam deserved in the right of his madhab we would need to take recourse to many volumes to complete this task But the Sheikh مصطفى may Allah preserve him actually in bringing together his clarifications that were light yet important and were easy upon the tongue and the, and the eye to remember has brought these matters to light both the madhab and the imam may Allah have mercy upon him in an easy matter وقد رسق الإمام أحمد بن حنبل العلم بالسنة ما جعله ينال لقب أمير المؤمنين في الحديث لقد كان المثال الأعلى في تبقيق في تبقيق في في تبقيقه للسنة and already Imam Ahmed was given the sustenance of knowledge of the Sunnah, in which he earned the title, the leader of the believers in Hadith. 
And he, this is the highest likeness and example that can be given of someone's rank in Sunnah when they have reached it, encompassed it, and there are there is very little of the Sunnah that he did not encompass. كان يقول, he used to say, ما كتبت حديثا إلا وقد عملت به حتى مر بي أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم احتجم وأعطى أبا طيبة دينارا فأعطيت الحمام فأعطيت الحجام دينارا حين احتجمت So he followed the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's hadith to such a degree that he used to say I did not write down any hadith except that I would act on it to the point that I passed by one hadith in which the Prophet وسلم, had the hijama done and he gave Abu Tayyibah one dinar. So I, when I had my hijama done, I gave him one dinar as well. And this is from Al-Madkhul Mufassal, Volume 2, pages 2, 3, 8. Uh, Al-Madkhul Mufassal, Al-Mujal Thani, Al-Sufha, Thamaniya, Wa Thalathuna, Wa Miyatan. Fanthuru ila musari'atihi ila tatbiqi hadha al-hadith. Kay yakun amil bisunna. Now look at how quick he was to implement this hadith. So that he could be acting by the sunnah in its capacity. So, look at this very carefully. So what the Imam is saying, his first expression he had, وَقَدْ رُزِقَ الْإِمَامُ أَحْمَدَ الْعِلْمِ بِالسُنَّةِ مَا جَعَلَهُ يَنَالُ لَقَبِ أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي الْحَدِيثِ وَقَدْ كَانَ الْمِثَالُ الْأَعْلَى فِي, تب... في تَطْبِيقِهِ لِلسُنَّةِ حِينَ تَبْلَغُهُ وَقِلَّ سُنَّةً لَمْ تَبْلَغُهُ right? So he's saying that Imam Ahmed was sufficed with the knowledge of the sunnah and that he was given this title the leader of the believers in hadith, and his tatbiq, his implementation of the sunnah, when there reached him, the knowledge was complete. And there was very little of the sunnah that didn't reach him, meaning that he wasn't able to implement, right? And this is why he said that I didn't write down any hadith except I acted on it. So whatever he was able to act on, he acted on it. Right? The imam carries on and he says, وَكَانَ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ ينهى أصحابه أن يتكلموا إلا بدليل صحيح وهو القائل للميمونة يا أبا الحسن إياك أن تتكلم في مسألة ليس لك فيها إمام So he, may Allah have mercy upon him, forbade his companions that they speak on a matter except with an authentic text. He used to say to الميموني, one of his students, O Abu al-Hasan, watch very carefully and beware that you speak on a matter in which you no imam has preceded you. Al-Madkhul Mufassal Al-Mujall Al-Thani Sufha 50 and And this is taken from Al-Madkhul Mufassal, Volume 2, pages two, page 250. وَيَكْفِي فِي عُلُوِّ مَنْزِلَتِهِ وَتِبَعِهِ لَسُنَّةِ قَوْلَ الْإِمَامُ الْمُطَّلِبِ الشَّيْفِعِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ وَشَهَدَتُهُ لَهُ وَهَاكُمْ مَا قَالَهُ الشَّافِعِيُّ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ قَالَ رَبِيعَ بن, سل... رَبِيع بن سليمان قَالَ الشَّافِعِيُّ مَنْ أَبْغَضْ الإمام أَحْمَدْ لِبْنْ حَنْبَغْ فَهُوَ كَافِرْ فَقُلْتْ تُطَلِقْ عَلَيْهِ إِسْمُ الْكَافِرْ فَقَالَ نَعَمْ مَنْ أَبْغَضْ أَحْمَدْ لِبْنْ حَنْبَلْ عَانِدٍ لِلسُنَّةِ وَمَنْ عَانِدِ السُنَّةِ قَصَدَ الصَّحَابَ so understanding all of this, it's sufficient to mention the highness of his rank, his following of the sunnah, the statement of the imam from the clan of Abu Muttalib, Abdul Muttalib, Imam al-Shafi'i, may Allah have mercy upon him, and the witness, the witness that he gave to Imam Ahmed, and look at what Imam Shafi'i had said, may Allah have mercy upon him. Qala Rabi' ibn Sulaiman. Al Rabi' ibn Sulaiman said, Qala Shafi'i, Imam Shafi'i said, Man abghad al Ahmad ibn Hanbal, fahu a kafir. Whoever has hatred for Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, then he is a kafir, an unbeliever. Qultu, tatluqu alayhi, ismu kafir. I said to him, 
so you would absolutely qualify someone with the title kafir for this circumstance. فَقَالَ نَعَمْ Imam Shafi'i said yes. مَنْ أَبْغَضَ أَحْمَدِ بْنِ حَنْبَلْ عَانِدٌ لِلْسُنَّةِ Whoever hates Ahmed bin Hanbal, then he is stubborn towards the Sunnah. وَمَنْ عَانِدٌ عَانِدٌ لِلْسُنَّةِ And whoever is stubborn to the Sunnah, قَصَدَ الصَّحَابَ Then he intends by that the companions. وَمَنْ قَصَدَ الصَّحَابَ And whoever intends by that the companions, أَبْغَضَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ Then he hates the Prophet. وَمَنْ أَبْغَضَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And whoever hates the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم كَفَرَ بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ He has committed kufr in the name of in, in Allah, the most grand. And this is from Munutha uh, al Volume 2, pages, page 4, 15. الحقيقة أن مناقبه ومأثره كثيرة أكثر من أن تحصى ومن أراد التوسع في ذلك فليرجع إليها في مضانها وإن هذا الكتاب جدير أن يقرأه كل طالب, طالب علم لما حوى من, مس من مسائل همة في طيات طياته فجز الله مؤلف خير الجزاء وسدد خطاء ونفع بعلومه المسلمين the reality is that his virtues and his favors and benefits are many, more than can be recorded in just this short book. But whoever wants to have a more voluminous understanding of that, then he can go to the relevant places and the relevant books. While this particular book is a linchpin in which, in which each student of knowledge can read it, and it is short and pithy in its presentation. So may Allah reward the author with the best reward, keep his steps firm, and benefit the Muslims with his knowledge. And I'd like to show gratefulness to Allah, then to him, that he had chosen the madhab of Muslim orthodoxy, the madhab of Imam Ahmed Muhammad, may Allah have mercy upon him. ذلك المذهب الذي قلت باعه وما ذلك إلا لأنه كريم, which at this time has the small fewest of followers, but that's only because it is noble. كما قال بعض الحنابلة وهو الشيخ الزين الدين الحنبلي, as has been said by some poets, uh, in particular, uh, the Sheikh of the Hanabil, the Sheikh Zain al-Din al-Hanbali, يقولون لي Someone said, they said to me, Oh, the Madhab of Ahmed has become few. But every small thing among people is da'il, is noble indeed. Look, you've made a mistake in what you have said. أَلَمْ تَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ الْكِرَامَ قَلِيلٌ Don't you know that the beneficial and blessed thing is always in a small amount so to be spread evenly? وَهُوَ ضَرُّ الْمُصَوِّنِ وَالْجَوْهَرُ الْمَكْنُونِ فَهُوَ ضَرُّ الْمُصَوِّنِ وَالْجَوْهَرُ الْمَكْنُونِ نَسَلَ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى أَنْ نَكُونَ مِنْ أَتْبَعِ هَذَا الْمَذْهَبِ الْمُبَارِكِ كَمَا أَشْكُرُ الشَّيْخِ مُصْطَفَى على على انصافه لما جاء في كتابه هذا محتريا الحق والصواب الذي يعرفك ويطلعك على نبذة منها ما منه وإلا فعلماؤنا الأفاضل قد أفاضوا دراية والرواية في كل ما يتعلق بهذا المذهب المنير So this blessed thing may Allah reward who uttered this poetry this noble pearl we ask Allah that we might be of the followers of this blessed and noble madhab in truth. Just as I thank the Sheikh Mustafa for his diligence and his equity in how he organized this book. And I hope that this might be a means towards the truth and correct in which you learn what's there and that you reflect on what comes to you on this short chapter, this short set of texts about the life of Muhammad. As indeed, our ulama are only the greatest of ulama, the most noble, in which we've been given the highest chains of transmission, the highest authority, and all of what's connected to this blessed method. And may Allah reward the author with the best of rewards. And 
أهل الله وخاصته فيكون قد جمع بين الحسنين بين قوله خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه So may Allah reward the author with the best of reward and benefit with him and with his science and knowledge that he has wherever he may go and wherever he may depart from just as May he make him from the people of the Quran, just as he made him, excuse me, just as he made him from the people of the Quran, the people of the people of Allah exclusively, in which he is joined between the two goodnesses, as the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, the best of you is the one who learned the Quran, then he taught it. Whoever Allah wants for him some good, he gives him fiqh. Of the deen, understanding of the deen. Fahani and lahu And so may he have benefit in that, in reaching that goal. Asal Allah Ta'ala and Yaja'ala A'malana Khalisatun li wajhihi al-Kareem. When Yaqfir Lana Zalatana and Jawad al-Kareem. Well, I answer Kaulu Shatibi Rahimahullah. I ask Allah, exalted be He, that He make our deeds exclusively for His noble face. That he forgive for us our mistakes and slips, because indeed he is benevolent and generous. And I have never forget forgotten the word the words of the Imam Shatibi, who said, When kana kharqa and if someone forgets himself, he shall be known as long as he has benefit. And whoever shows benevolence and magnanimity, then that shall be what rectifies him, as long as he is truthful in that regard. The servant to the knowledge and the Quran. This is from Muwafiq Mahmoud Uyun. And so this closes the third installment of our common third installment of our introduction and our commendations of the different Muraja um, or sheikhs in this regard. So what he's giving here is really, really powerful. And his explanation was very detailed, alhamdulillah. And so his commendation is three pages. I, th- I believe this was one of the longer ones um, in which he wanted to lay out in really strong detail. The only other one was Sheikh Jamal al-Din uh, Sayyidawan. I think his was the... Uh, longest one, but this was really quite a stunning presentation. Um, the commendations and the layout of what he was given to say, this man is knowledgeable. We accept what he's done. It was well put together. He did a splendid job. They really took their time. So Alhamdulillah, I apologize for the pauses and some of the slips. It's just some of the language that they're using and how detailed they are. And some of the poetry that they're quoting and some of the things that they're saying it's it's just things that while i'm reading it i'm reflecting on it's like i've read this book more than once but it's just sometimes while i'm even reading on it i'm reflecting it and it's just alhamdulillah it's putting real blessings um in my life and i hope for yours uh what we're taking away from it i'd like to say in closing that inshallah our next class what we'll be looking to do it will be to then open and present the text, mashallah. And so we're going to be starting with our first unit. And the unit is made up of a number of chapters. And we're looking to go through our way. I tried to put these up once a week. So I put up um, a dars a week, inshallah. And so if we take our time and do it in that way, I think I'll be able to stick to that. I have a number of other projects uh, that are currently going, so I apologize in advance for delays, but my niya is once a week I can commit to that. If I have more time or more opportunity, I can always put up more, which that will be a pleasant surprise, inshallah, for myself and you that I've been able to have the time to do that. But I think more wisely is for me to commit to one, one a week, inshallah. So alhamdulillah, these are the commendations of these big muraji' and sheikhs. And I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, made me and you to reflect upon this information that we received 
that we're able to take this with us, inshallah, to reflect on what we have and to put it into practice. So what we will have for our next class is we will be looking at the introduction of the author, Sheikh Mustafa, and our introduction will probably take up our next presentation. So that will be the introduction to the book. So we're starting the book, but the author gives an introduction to the first unit, what his goals are, what he's trying to complete, what he hopes that you'll understand and what he hopes that you'll take away from the text. And then I think that will take us into probably the first page of unit one and which we'll be discussing the Imam's life, what he did, his travel for knowledge and how his travel for knowledge and his different teachers that he had set him up as a blueprint to be amongst the greatest of people that this ummah has ever known. So from Ahmed to Ahmed, there has never been one like Ahmed, meaning from Ahmed, the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Ahmed ibn Hanbal, from Ahmed to Ahmed, there's never been an Ahmed like Ahmed and none greater than Ahmed. So inshallah, we will close here. And I say, Subhanak Allahumma bihamdika wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. أستغفرك ويتوب إليك إنه غفور رحيم حميم رحيم ولا يداه إن الله والسلام عليكم